OC World is made possible by the generous contributions from the Marisla Foundation, the Keith and Judy Swain Family Foundation, Orange County Community Foundation, and viewers like you. Thank you. Manuel Hernandez Trujillo was a great artist who has left us with a creative and expansive body of artwork. He attended Garden Grove schools, received art scholarships, visited Mexico, became an activist in the Bay Area during the 1960s. He also taught at UC Irvine and at Santa Ana Valley High School for 12 years. Not art, but mathematics. He died in Santa Ana in 2018. His friend and OC World co-producer Manuel Gomez published Dancing with the Sun, the artwork of Manuel Hernandez Trujillo, which includes stunningly beautiful examples from his artwork such as paintings, murals, watercolors, and sketches, among others. This particular program launches one of OC World's goals to showcase the creative arts that connect neighbors to their history and to the diverse cultures and that form the mosaic of our Southern California communities. Based on Dr. Gomez's book, this film grew out of a collaboration with his friends and colleagues, Gerardo Muet, Nidia Hernandez, and the San Ana Library, History Room Media Project staff. OC World, in collaboration with San Ana Public Library, is proud to present Dancing with the Sun, the artwork of Manuel Hernandez Trujillo. The red sun's sword slashes my soul. Black blood flows from my darkness. I am the son of an ancient people. I cry tears of blood and fire. During the day, I hunt. And at night, I carry mountains on my back. Cinco minutos más viejo. Enter, enter, introduce myself. Introduce my heart first. Pase junto a ti. Cinco minutos de vida que me diste y que te di. Cinco minutos más viejo Dios mío, ni lo sentí Así que pasen las horas Así que pasen los días Así que pasen los años Quiero envejecer a gusto Quiero envejecer a gusto Envejecer junto a ti
was born in Huntington Beach in, in Ocean View. But my mother used to transport us to Santana to grow up. And I grew up on 17th Street, 17th in Euclid. It is my mom. When he began painting as a little boy, what he did is he worked in the orange groves, picking oranges. And he would see his fellow workers and he'd go home and draw them. And the workers really got a good laugh out of it and really appreciated it. And that's all it took for Manuel to begin to understand that this talent had to be developed because it could bring joy to the workers. Those early themes of painting workers or the themes that remain throughout his life as an adult. It was the work ethic of the campesinos that was instilled in his mind. That work ethic is what caused him to really hone into his culture, into the cultura, and to his past, and um, how that's gotten to us as a, as a people to where we are today. Throughout high school and college, Manuel studied art and Mexican art history. With the creative help of his professors, he made a goal to travel to Mexico to learn more of its history and of the art of his ancestors. When he returned from uh, artistic studies in Mexico, he brought all that knowledge of the revolutionary murals of Mexico into the Bay Area. He introduced Mexican art to us, or indigenous art, you might say, from Mexico. When he explained it to us and what it meant, it also made us proud of our Indianness. Before that, we wanted to be Anglos. They were better than we were. We had been told that all our lives. And it wasn't until Manuel started to introduce these incredible images with these beautiful faces. It dawned on us that we were beautiful. He fundamentally taught us how to know who we are, where we come from, and where we're going. The history of the movement, the, the Chicano movement, it's the practice, the, the, the history of Mexico. Manuel played a very influential role in the early days of the Chicano movement. His uh, influence is that of a calm, quiet giant across the entire state of California. And he helped establish one of the most important art collectives in the young Chicano movement called Mala Efe the Mexican-American Liberation Artists Front. At that particular time, Cesar Chavez was moving forward with the farm worker strike. Artists felt that we needed to participate alongside with them, with our art, to talk about and explain what was taking place uh, to people. Manuel's work was so important because it really demonstrated our point of view in the Chicano Latino community. We saw that we were treated with so many injustices. We didn't have access to education, health services, fair housing, employment, and the racism was tremendous. The images that these artists were creating, they were creating new Chicano faces with pride that said, ya basta, enough, enough of being second class citizens. The Mexican American Liberation Art Front they encourage Chicano and Chicana artists to push past the idea of simply selling their art or exhibiting in galleries and museums and asked artists to actively explore what their art could do for the Chicano movement during the explosive 1960s, sometimes referred to as an ethnic renaissance. In 1974, when Manuel Gomez and Eduardo Escobedo came to UC San Diego where I was a student with these beautiful posters and it was the Free the Olga Talamantes movement who was incarcerated uh, in Argentina and they talked about the struggles and that poster was so powerful. I mean I was in my early 20s and it's like wow, love life enough to struggle. After this, this was my family. And they should, they should learn from that. Activism is necessary. Activism is the, the only thing that I can do. In 1979, Manuel became an art instructor in the Fine Arts Department at UCI under the student-recommended faculty program. 
It was during this time that his collaborative work with students on campus resulted in a mural for the Campus Cross-Cultural Center. If you look behind me, this mural is one of the things he did with our students here in 1980. And you can see the signs of police brutality. You can see the, the, the discrimination against indigenous people. You can see our heroes in struggle, like Che Guevara, Cesar Chavez. You can see Milan Zapata. You can see the oppression of different groups like Manzanar, the Japanese Americans over here in the other corner. And you can also see the center indigenous point of struggle in the teepee on the island of Alcatraz and the bridge of San Francisco. And you can see the aspiration for hope, for the unity that he calls for in the center. This represents all of the struggles of all of the people of this land. Anytime one is conquered, the first thing they do is destroy your culture. Anything that, that might remind you of who you were. Our culture is what makes us strong. And Manuel Hernandez said, it's extremely important to retain your cultural roots. For many students, it's not important. It's all personal and relative. Roots are too important. One does not just acquire another culture. One needs his own space to unite the cultural elements of the university, those elements which are isolated. And that's one thing Manuel was always engaged in, was to take our Mexicano Latino culture and combine it with whatever educational environment we're in or whatever circumstance we're in, not to separate those two. Manuel felt strongly about the importance of providing high quality educational experiences for all students, as well as engaging students in their educational process. Manuel returned to the university to earn a high school teaching credential in mathematics and was hired by the Santa Ana Unified School District as a bilingual math instructor. How do you get kids excited about math? I get excited myself. Uh, and I think that's catching. Uh, I think if, uh, if my students see me struggling with the problem and enjoying figuring it out, uh, they'll do the same thing. I learned through Mr. Manuel Hernandez art the Chicano movement. I was born and raised in Mexico, so they don't teach in Mexico about the Chicano studies. That when I was in high school, my school was 80% Hispanics. And the first assembly that I attend, there was nothing about Hispanics. So I was talking to him during the lunchtime, and he goes, what do you can do? I said, well, I don't know anything about, you know, that I can represent. I used to dance when I was in Mexico. He goes, why you don't teach the other people to dance? So. He let us use his room, he stay after school, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And he also gave us like a logo for us so that we can have t-shirts and then he, of course, he designed it. And honestly, I don't think we knew how lucky we were. <laughs> Started from the early paintings in Mexico. I first met Manuel, he was doing woodcuts, beautiful woodcuts, which is a hard way to go for art. You have to cut the wood, carve an image on the wood, and then you put a print, a paper over it and you print it. And he was doing these pre-Columbian motifs uh, in woodcuts that were so profoundly beautiful that it, and moving that uh, I, I just fell in love with his work. He actually really enjoyed finding the organic beauty in something. So wood has its own natural flow, it has its own imperfections, and he actually really enjoyed taking those imperfections as a piece of his art and to help him sort of kind of flow into the images. I have a piece of uh, uh, Manuel's work at home, this uh, yarn painting. And it's just a very simple, beautiful woman. And yet you see centuries of our culture. The, the yarn paintings, well, it's the history of Mexico. The Indians used this technique to, to weave their, their own artwork. It, it has different symbols but it's, it's still there. 
They're his own invention of sorts, which are different colored yarns glued onto a big board, forming these mysterious figures, many of them uh, individual feminine figures of power, that in my estimation may be reflected of his children. I don't know. Artists don't, don't know exactly where, where it comes from. Watercolor is supposed to be difficult to paint, and, and I find that exciting. What I really enjoyed watching when he would do watercolors was actually the setup and the tools that he used. If anybody ever saw his studio, I think they would find it pretty amazing that his watercolors were always a terrible mess. He really enjoyed colors crossing over on their own, organically. One of the recent series that he did was, uh, it's a series of naranjos, which are orange trees. As a migrant child, he used to pick oranges with his brothers, and he always wanted to do a series of the orange trees and picking, and he completed it. Monroe takes this incredible, unjust effort to make a living yet contributing to the wealth of this country, and he turned it into something very beautiful. He has an incredible mural in Fountain Valley that he did out of his love for that community. The images on this wall reflect a spirit of rebirth of La Raza, to regenerate our identity, to reestablish the fact that we belong here. Manuel had created a, uh, a project that basically brought the people together from the barrio and from our surrounding community to create a, a spirit of unity. And that's why in a sad way to see that the images are, are painted over. It wasn't just a political repression of beautiful ethnic art. It appears that they had a reason that the mural had become desecrated. The entire reason why the mural was was put in place was to give the community something to be proud about so that a lot of the tagging would stop. And for a very long time, for an entire generation, I think that there was that level of respect there. Unfortunately, as the community grew up and their children grew up, they didn't understand the meaning behind it because it didn't speak to the community that started moving in. And so it started to lose its integrity um, when there was just that much graffiti on it. That allowed the city to, and the community to have a reason to cover over the graffiti, which was really also covering over the painting and the mural. So it's a tragedy on many levels, and I would really hope that now, nearly 50 years later, the community begins to understand what extraordinary ancestral memories are painted here that would give this community pride. It's a wall that's crying for the paint to be restored and the images to come back to life. This mural uh, located here in Placentia has a little bit of a different story than the one in Colonia Juarez. And my understanding was that the city stopped the mural because uh, all the permits weren't in order to complete the mural. Nevertheless, what has survived is quite extraordinary. The central image in this mural is, of course, the uh, Campesino Eagle. Beautiful eagle. There are a lot of images in this uh, that are still visible. And, and it's really... Uh, wonderful feeling, mystical almost, to be able to look at a mural of Manuel Hernández Trujillo that is incomplete, yet it remains like a, like a memory. Because my father is an artist, we had the best garage in the neighborhood. <laughs> there weren't a lot of rules. He was very free-spirited, so if we wanted to play in the backyard and dig a hole and swim in a puddle of mud. He allowed us to do that. He allowed us to find ourselves and to focus on who we wanted to be as individuals and didn't really push us to be anything else other than who we really truly were. I, I want the person that looking at my art to feel 
the, 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 the need to express themselves in, the, in the, their own way. Manuel retired as a classroom teacher at the age of 70, having been honored on several occasions for his outstanding work and dedication as an educator. My father's legacy is hopefully not just his artwork, but also uh, education as a whole. Education about our community as well as others who have achieved a lot of things with patience and, and perseverance. He leaves a legacy as a teacher, and uh, I know there are lots of people that were his students that uh, were shaped and formed and are happier people and more knowledgeable people and more well-rooted people knowing who they are because they met him as a teacher. One of the reasons I became a teacher is because Mr. Manuel Hernandez um, taught me the love for teaching. He taught us how to share, how to help each other. He overcame so many obstacles in his lifetime and not over overcoming them, sharing with all of us how to get things done. Manuel's legacy is his way of contacting and committing himself to people, giving you information that will last forever. Never give up. Never give up. It's necessary to, to continue working, to give, give meaning to, to life as, as we do it. It's been a beautiful experience. And my my life my life was had had more meaning. Que viva la raza grita el sol mientras. La muerte escucha. Yo escucho mi sangre, canto verde esta noche cansada, canto del campesino que siembra semillas de su corazón en el surco de la revolución, y el tiempo tiembla con sangre y esperanza, también la tierra tiene su venganza. Así, Como mi madre despertaba en la madrugada, todavía oscuro floreció el movimiento y la tierra tembló y gritó, ¡Huelga! Las palabras salieron como piedras y la dulce risa del río del tiempo dice, ¡Basta! Unidos canta el viento mientras el sol Como mi padre muere de hambre, somos solo una rama, solo una raza humana que lucha y ama. Ay, Manuel, uh, sigue adelante, carnal. Uh, me encanta tu trabajo y me encanta hacer esta película contigo, uh, simplemente siguiendo la lucha, como siempre. Papá, I just want to tell you that I've never been more proud to be your daughter. Thank you for everything that you've always done for us and for allowing us to be proud about who we are. Manuel, I wish you were sitting here next to me so that you could help clarify all the things that I'm attempting to communicate about our uh, connection. Uh, she left far too soon. Uh, God, there's so many people yet that you could have touched, that you would have touched. Manuel, de todo corazón, muchísimas gracias por todas las lecciones, tu amor, tu apoyo, 
thank you so much for all your love, all your support through so many different challenges. We've been on this journey a long time together and I really love you and thank you for all the support that you have given me, my family, and the community, and the students. Oh my gosh, the students. That's the real prize. The joy to the students and mentoring them and encouraging them not to take no for an answer, to get on that bus and go to the university. So, uh, yeah, thank you. Talking to the truckers, helping with the strikers, way before the rising of the sun.